let's make a start on our next vodcast, which is SHM and Waves Forced Oscillations and Resonance. Again, there are now several assessment statements associated with this unit. Here they are, or you can look at them in your many other resources. Um, previously, when we looked at an oscillator, we assumed it was a closed system. That means that there was no energy coming in or out. But that doesn't actually work in reality. In reality, we have friction, we have air resistance, and we have other losses. Uh, the oscillator needs to do work to overcome these forces. Therefore, the total energy must decrease. It's lost as heat. As it decreases, this means that the maximum potential energy is less, so the size of the oscillations decreases until all of the energy is gone. And this process we call damping. So we can have a look at damping in our simulation. Um, this is the standard system, so it's just swinging backwards and forwards as it has done previously. But if I pause it, and I introduce some friction into the system. Let's reset it up to our maximum and press play. And we'll now see that as time goes by, the oscillation gets less and less. And we start seeing that the thermal energy increases. This is the total amount of energy lost as heat. So we started off with a maximum, and as time goes by, that will decrease, 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 decrease until the oscillation comes to a stop. And we can see it carrying on there. Um, and we can move it up a bit more, maybe increase our friction a bit more. By increasing the amount of friction, we increase the amount of damping. So before we had a light damping system, and this we have now is a heavy damping system. So our terms are light damping, which is uh, a normal amount of damping. Heavy damping generally has to be enhanced. We're deliberately trying to increase the damping. And then we have critical damping. In a critical damping system, the damping is so heavy that you don't get any complete oscillations. It goes from maximum amplitude and down to a rest position and stops. And these three graphs illustrate how the... Um, how the displacement changes with time. So light damping slowly decreases, heavy damping gives you a couple of oscillations, and a critical damping gives you no oscillations at all. Where is damping used? Well, shock absorbers. Now it's actually the suspension system of a car or vehicle which absorbs shocks, but if there was no uh, shock absorbers, what would happen is that the car would just keep on wobbling for a long time. That wouldn't be very comfortable. So instead, we have the shock absorbers, and again, I've got a little uh, video to illustrate how they work. So if we go on to this, just play. The hydraulic shock absorber provides its dampening action by transferring oil under pressure through valves which restrict the oil flow. The twin tube type is the most common. Okay, that's enough of that. Basically, you have the oscillator in the middle here, going up and down inside an enclosed column with oil on either side, which can slowly pass between them. So that provides critical damping, um, and we can vary the amount of damping that's required from that. Back to the PowerPoint. And the other situation where damping is useful is in music. Many music, most sounds are caused by vibrations, and so you can have a system of light damping, like in a cymbal, where you want it to carry on going for a while, or heavy damping, like in drums, where you want the sound to be uh, um, not so sustained. Uh, pianos operate by wires being hit by hammers, and there you can change the amount of damping by the pedals to either make the vibration carry on longer or to make it shorter. And I have another little video somewhere. Where did it go? Uh, open the finder. Uh, Okay, I thought it was open. Let's play. And this video shows what happens when we hit a cymbal. You don't often get to see slow motion hitting the cymbal, so you see it wobbling away there, 
and vibrating. Not very damped, it keeps on vibrating because you want to make the sound keep on playing. Okay, so that's damping. Light, heavy, critical. Now, all our examples so far have involved a pendulum that we displace, release, and away it swings. And that's known as the natural frequency. For a pendulum, that pin depends on the local value of gravity, and it depends on the length of the pendulum. For a mass on a spring, it would depend on the value of the mass and the uh, how stiff the spring was. However, we can force the oscillator to oscillate using a different frequency by completely pushing it using something called a driver. And I can illustrate that using yet another PFET demonstration for resonance. So here we have a driver which pumps in and out and here is a mass on a spring. So let's turn it on. So this is currently operating at 0 0.88 hertz and it's pumping away and has a fairly small altitude pumping away as it does. Okay, now let's see if we change the frequency to 1.1 hertz. So it's going a lot faster and it's pumping away again. A little bit chaotic. Sometimes it gives a big amplitude and that's because it's, it's, it, as, the, as the mass is moving upwards the driver gives it another push, so it gives it an extra push. But sometimes the driver gives it a push as the mass is moving downwards, which tends to dampen the oscillation. However, if we set the frequency to exactly 1 hertz, then it matches the natural frequency of this spring. In other words, it's always giving it a bit more of a push. Another example would be someone pushing on a swing. Okay, where if you give it a push every time when the person swings forwards, then those pushes add and add until you have a big swing going. Yeah, very dangerous, that's what my parents always told me. So, if you have a driving frequency just below the natural oscillation, low amplitude. If you have it just above the natural oscillation, low amplitude. But if you have it at or very close to the natural frequency of oscillation, then you can get a very large amplitude. And that is a very, very, very important uh, phenomenon called resonance. Okay? So, on a graph, you have this natural frequency here, matched against amplitude. If the frequency is less than the natural frequency, low amplitude, higher low amplitude, but around the natural frequency you have high resonance. What's this good for? Well, again, in music, um, an instrument, a stringed instrument like a violin or a cello would be, if it was just a piece of string, not a very loud instrument. But by putting a sound box on the back you can make the air vibrate at the resonant frequency which makes the sound much, much larger. Okay, bad resonance happens. Well, one example of that is in structures. If you have a skyscraper in the wind or a bridge, then it will vibrate with the wind. But if it vibrates at the natural resonant frequency, then those vibrations can get bigger and bigger and bigger until bad things happen. So let's look at an example of something bad happening. Go away, come back here, and open up this video. There we go. Galloping Gertie was the nickname given to the first attempt at building a bridge to carry Washington State Route 16 across the Tacoma Narrows in Washington State. It was open to traffic on the 1st of Make July, bigger. and quickly earned its descriptive moniker for the way it moved in the wind. As is so often the case, the problem was one of funding. Plans for the bridge had kicked off in earnest in 1937, when the Washington State Toll Bridge Authority came into being took control of $5,000 for a feasibility study into building a suspension bridge. But when the authority applied to the Public Works Administration for $11 million to build the bridge to engineer Clark Eldridge, a New York company said they could do it for less. The new design featured two and a half meter girders for the roadway instead of the original seven and a half meter ones. 
So the Tacoma Narrows disaster, which this is, was caused by two factors. One, the bridge was badly designed in that it was vibrating at its natural frequency. The, the frequency was just created by the wind. And the second problem was that it was structurally much weaker than it should have been. So that frequency was enough to crack the concrete and destroy the bridge. Oh, poor Tubby the Cocker Spaniel. Okay, so damping. Be quiet. So damping is a damping of oscillations, makes them less. Resonance, on the other hand, is a situation where you can make oscillations much bigger, either for good or for bad. 